2022 will be an important year for Xi Jinping and his political enemies. Before the 20th CCP National Congress, both sides are trying to eliminate the opponent to hold on to power without bringing down the Communist Party. Mao Zedong once said, a regime is born out of the barrel of guns. Amid the escalating infighting, Xi's relations with the PLA is an important variable that may determine if he wins or not. What are Xi's relations with the Chinese military? Does he have a good handle on his commanders? Hello, welcome to Lazy Roll Talk, I'm Lei. Xi Jinping's relations with the Chinese military were probably the shakiest last year. 2021 was the year that the PLA saw the most unscheduled leadership change. In an unprecedented move, she shuffled most PLA commanders within a few months. On July 5th, she appointed new commanders for the Southern Theater, the Western Theater, the Army, and the Strategic Support Forces. Two months later, on September the 6th, he replaced the commander for the Western Theater again and named new commanders for the Central Theater, the Navy, Air Forces, as well as the head of the National Defense University. China's top military school. Within a few months, four of the PLA's five forces, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Strategic Support Force, changed commanders, and only the Rocket Force remains untouched. And the leadership of three out of the five military theaters also changed hands. Alarmingly, the Western Theater changed its commander four times within 12 months. China experts commented that the extent and frequency of military leadership change indicated Xi's lack of trust in his commanders. This theory was further supported by a South China Morning Post article last August. It claimed that the CCP military refused to fight and was unwilling to be held responsible for the enemy brought on by China's wolf warrior diplomacy, a direction that Xi said himself. Xi's troubled relations with the military became more public last December when news of the disappearance of Liu Yazhou, a leading communist princely, was spreading. In late December, a Chinese writer living in the U.S. revealed that the retired admiral was detained by authorities. The Epoch Times confirmed on December 24th from a source close to Liu's family that Liu was indeed being closely watched by authorities. But the reason was unknown, and there was no official announcement. Who is Liu Yazhou, and what does his appearance tell us about Xi's relations with the military? Liu is the former political commissar of the National Defense University, which is called the Cradle of the Generals. He is a member of the CCP's 18th Central Committee. Liu's wife, Li Xiaoling, is the daughter of former Chinese President Li Xianyan. In addition to being an influential princely, Liu is also a military strategist. A former Chinese Navy Lieutenant Colonel Yao Chen said this about Liu. Liu Yazhou在军队的地位非常的明显。一个是这个人是上将，第二个他有太子党背景。更主要的是这个人敢说话。in October 2015, his article titled China-Japan Relations in Light of the Diaoyu Islands shocked the world when he claimed that Japan's four-hour total annihilation of the East China Sea Fleet is not unbelievable. In September 2015, Liu had published his book, Spirit, which discussed three major military crises that could lead to the fall of the CCP. According to the book, a war in the Taiwan Strait could lead to a war between China and Japan, and a conflict in the East China Sea could also lead to a war between China and Japan. Once war breaks out, China only has one choice, which is to win, while the United States has multiple choices. For the United States, if Japan wins, it wins. If Taiwan wins, it wins too. Conversely, if Japan loses, it doesn't lose. If Taiwan loses, it can choose to withdraw or let Taiwan return to the mainland. Even if Taiwan returns to the mainland, the U.S. military can still stay in Asia, undefeated. In Liu's opinion, after the CCP's decades of endeavor, the strategy of peaceful unification with Taiwan has failed. 
and unification by force has become the only option. At the same time, he believes that the duel between China and the United States has already begun. And the only way for China to come out as a winner is by replacing the United States as the world police who maintains international order. Liu has openly expressed his dissatisfaction with Xi and many gatherings of the princelings. He views the war against Taiwan as a gamble that will inevitably lead to a decisive battle between China, the United States, and Japan. Once it begins, it will get ugly. Although Liu supports the war against Taiwan, he doesn't believe that Xi Jinping can lead or win such a decisive battle. Therefore, he wants to prevent Xi from getting a third term. Like many princelings, Liu supported Xi when he first came to power and was a Xi ally. But why did he turn against Xi? Now, the princelings are a unique group. They may not hold high positions or run a large conglomerate, but they feel entitled because their fathers or grandfathers were part of the original communist power circle. However, this privilege cannot be shared with those who weren't born into the red family. For example, former CCP leader Jiang Zemin rose to power only because Deng Xiaoping promoted him. So when Xi Jinping, who is a princeling, started to crack down on Jiang Zemin faction with his anti-corruption campaign, the princelings were on Xi Jinping's side since they didn't see Jiang as one of them. However, once Xi's anti-corruption whip started to hit the princelings, their overseas assets or their privilege, they turned against Xi. The struggle between Xi Jinping and the princelings isn't an ideological struggle or the struggle between hardliners and reformists, but a power struggle. The reason Liu was forced into early retirement in 2017 wasn't related to his political views, but for a juicy one. According to Yuan Hongbin, a prominent Chinese dissident who is also a writer, a legal scholar now living in Australia, the reason was Liu's Chinese-American mistress, Hollywood star Bai Ling. Before coming to the U.S. in 1991, Miss Bai was a performer with a military dance and music troupe in Chengdu and Liu's mistress. In 2016, Liu produced a TV documentary series celebrating the 80th anniversary of the CCP's Long March and gave his ex-lover a role in the film, and the two rekindled their relationship. Liu's wife, the daughter of a former president of China, however, got mad, and she asked Xi Jinping to reprimand Liu Yazhou. This allegedly started a big storm in Zhongnanhai. The drama wasn't over yet. Bai Ling had appeared in Red Corner with Richard Gere, a film the CCP deemed as anti-China. Bai is also known for her provocative image that's too sexy for many to handle. Because of her many previous nude or semi-nude photos, her role in a so-called sacred CCP historical documentary provoked outrage among the leftists in China. The Chinese state broadcaster removed her from the documentary and Bai issued a letter of apology. By the way, the New York Times published an article on this in November 2016. Xi Jinping gave Liu Yazhou an early retirement in 2017 and thus ended his political and military career. This was a turning point and Liu turned away from supporting Xi. Liu, however, is very influential among the princelings and has a large following among senior military officers. According to Yuan Hongbin, Liu is exceptionally arrogant. Not only does he think he's better suited than Xi to lead China in a battle with the United States, he also believes that many others are also better qualified than Xi. This is essentially the reason why he has disappeared. However, other princelings who are close to him are now trying to help him. No one knows at this point what Xi Jinping will do with Liu Yazhou. Does Liu really pose a threat to Xi? His bad decision in casting his sexy American mistress in a CCP documentary, which ended his political career, 
tells me he probably isn't as smart as he thinks he is. But his outspokenness and daring manner certainly made Xi Jinping apprehensive. We'll see what happens. What Chinese words should we learn today? How about let's learn the word for good and bad. Good is how. It's made up of two parts. The left side is nu, meaning woman or female. The right side is zi, which is a polite word that means a person. So nu zi is woman or women. When you push the two parts together, it becomes the character good. Hao. You see, women are good. Bad is made up of two parts too. The left side is tu, earth. The right side is bu, no. When you have no earth, you can't grow anything, and we have nothing to stand on. That's bad, huai. No earth equals bad, huai. And women equals good, hao. Hao and huai. So you may ask me, if women are good, then what's men in Chinese? Well, we'll save that for next time. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. See you soon.